NFL lineman Mitchell Schwartz is a man of many talents. On the gridiron, he's been one of the most respected offensive tackles in the game, with all pro honors and a Super Bowl ring to prove it. Off the field, he's a published author and amateur chef, sharing his culinary exploits on his cooking blog, Mitch in the Kitch. But today we're here to talk about Mitch the Watch Collector, and his collection is as eclectic as it is personal. I'm your host, Danny Milton, and this is Talking Watches with Mitchell Schwartz. Hey Mitch, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to get to do this finally. Really appreciating your background right now, out the, the jerseys, the footballs. So what, what's going on back there? What jerseys are we looking at? Thanks, yeah, we got uh, my two Super Bowl ones. So the one over here is the Super Bowl jersey from last year in which I played and which we won. So that's got a lot of good memories. The one over here is the one from a couple nights ago. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to play in that one. You know, been out with, with this back injury for a little bit, so still cool to have. I mean, still a, a cool experience to be able to, to go to those. And I mean, losing it, it's crazy and just makes you honestly appreciate the first one even more and, you know, what we were able to do. That's, that's incredible. So you're a professional football player, you're a published author, you're a home chef. Hey everyone, welcome back to Mission the Kitch. Today we're making a simple, easy pasta dish. You know, how do you find time to become a watch collector? You know, where does that fit into your incredibly busy schedule? Yeah, just something, you know, you got to fill the, the night some way, winding down. Um, you know, looking back, I mean, I guess I didn't realize I was so into watches until, you know, it really blew up the last few years. But, you know, growing up in Los Angeles, went to Disneyland and, you know, I had a Mickey Mouse watch, you know, growing up and uh, kind of just always had a watch in some regard. It's, it's been a cool progression. I mean, it's just something that, you know, over time, I realized how passionate I am about it. And, you know, the first kind of nicer quote unquote watch is uh, actually this Hamilton Jazz Master. This was a graduation gift from college from my dad and my uncle. And so, you know, it's something I'll always have and got good sentiment of value. But honestly, it's also my most dressy watch. And so I don't dress up too much. I don't, uh, you know, wear suits or, or tuxes or anything like that more than a few times a year. And so it's a, a cool piece to wear with the hat. It's obviously slim. And so that was, I guess, kind of my first jump into the higher world of horology. And then the watch I'm wearing today, so it's the JLC uh, Extreme Lab 2. I think it's just an awesome watch. I mean, if I probably had to take like one single watch that would be good for pretty much any situation, short of like a tux, this would be it. It's a little bit bigger. I'm starting to realize, you know, what my true watch size is. You know, my wrist is like eight and a half to nine inches. So <laughs> it's, it's pretty sizable. And you can see, I mean, this is like close to a 47 millimeter watch and, you know, not even close to overhanging or anything. So Not at all, no. I do like having like some sort of timing mechanism, uh, whether it's a chrono or a dive bezel. You know, with all the cooking I do, honestly, it's really nice to just kind of click the chrono and, all right, it's going to be, you know, 20 minutes, so this is reduced or something like that. And I do like having a date as well. I find that during the football season, you know, everything we do is like regimented by day. So I'll know, oh, it's Wednesday because we have these meetings and this type of practice, or it's Saturday because tomorrow's the game. And I don't really think about the date. I tend to miss a lot of anniversaries and birthdays and stuff like that because the date just kind of passes me by. So... I actually legitimately like look down at my watch and I make sure I'm, I'm catching the date every now and again. But yeah, my, my collection is definitely trended a little bit bigger, which fits my wrist a bit better. Uh, a little bit sportier, just not having to worry about them. I want to, you know, wake up in the morning, throw something on, not worry about it throughout the day, not worry if it rains, not worry if it, you know, gets wet. And um, that's just kind of where I'm at these days. And I, I do like to have a little bit of utility with them too, like I said, with, you know, ideally a date and some sort of timing mechanism. Let's talk a little bit about the fact that in the same collection where you have the Extreme Lab, you've got some G-Shocks. So, you know, what, what are those yeah. and, and how do those kind of fit into your collecting strategy? Yeah, you know, I think I had one earlier as a kid, but not recently. So I got this guy actually this past year. The G-Shocks have a ton of numbers and I don't know exactly which reference it is off the top of my head, but, you know, kind of works out relatively Chiefs-ish colors with the yellow and the black. So I just got that to, you know, kind of have around the facility. You know, if I am wearing a watch and, and I want to really work out in it, I can just kind of grab this guy and, and throw it on, not worry about it. And then the most recent one, you guys are well familiar with this guy. Sure. Uh, the Hodinkee John Mayer piece. Honestly, when it came out, I was pretty blown away by it. You know, the color scheme's really nice. Kind of just the classic, the 
say this one's a little bit more of the classic kind of G-Shock shape and form and function. I enjoy wearing it, and that's also one of my things is I, I do like wearing all my watches, and I make it a point to, to wear them as much as possible and to, to change them out. Of your chronograph collection, I think I see that you have a particular birth year watch. What's the story behind that? I know those, that might have some special meaning to you. Yeah, I do. It's uh, an Omega. You're not going to believe this, but it's a limited edition. The Apollo 11 20th anniversary piece, and so my birth year is 89 and celebrating the 20th year since 69. I did kind of want to check, you know, the vintage box. I did want to check the Omega box, the Speedmaster, you know, having those in the collection. I do have it currently on the bun strap. I think it's technically 42 millimeter, but it seems to wear and feel a little bit smaller than that. So for my wrist, I feel like it definitely, you know, accentuates the size and makes it a little more proportional. Yeah, and speaking of chronographs, you showed us the, the JLC Extreme Lab, but what about the other JLC that you got in the collection? Yeah, so this guy is a, a world timer. I think it's the Master Compressor Extreme World Time. This guy's actually the platinum variant, so it's got that gray dial to it. The typical stainless one has the black dial. So I got it on the rubber strap right now. So I can go, you know, travel around. We're going in a pool, we're going in a beach. It's got the quick release lug, so I can take it off. I got a couple cool leather straps for it and kind of dress it up a little bit if I need to if we're going out. It is kind of a big boy, 47 millimeter, I think about 15 or 16 thick, and I actually find this wears really well. And so it's a cool piece, just, you know, I can just bring the one on a trip, have it on my wrist at all times, I don't really need anything else. I also see you've got a Blanc Pond in the collection. How does a dive watch like that kind of fit in to your lifestyle as well? Yeah, another piece that's just, you know, really easy to pick up and wear. So when I first started collecting, I actually, I don't know if I had an aversion to dive watches, but I wasn't a huge fan of dive watches and the aesthetic. You know, I just felt like the bezels were a little bit too chunky, kind of made the proportions seem a little bit off. You know, I did come in contact with, with this guy, it's a 45 millimeter, so it fits my wrist better than, you know, traditional Samariner wood. So it's got everything I need, it's a simple piece, it sounds really good, it's fun to play around with. Yeah, that was nice. It's got a... I think a five-day power reserve, if not slightly longer in, in real life. And so, again, a watch that you can kind of just wear it, forget about it, throw it on the nightstand for a few days, come back to it, it's still running. I think those are definitely underrated watches for what they do, for the history that, that Blancpain has. It's a, it's a really cool watch. And you've got another cool one, I think, in the same vein, a Royal Oak Offshore there. This one is, I think it's from like maybe 08-ish. It's a, a boutique special edition. I thought with the red uh, accents and especially the red strap that we got. A really cool Chiefs watch as well. And just, you know, I really like the, uh, the full numerals there and the loom from it is fantastic. I've been really pleased with it. I think it's one of my wife's favorite watches too, so definitely gets a lot of wrist time and, you know, a lot of love from her as well. Now I feel like we, we can't really, you know, talk about watches without talking about Rolex a little bit. And I know you've got some Rolex in your collection and one that I think is Pretty fitting for the size of watches that you like is a watch that for a while was one of the bigger ones that Rolex made, which would, would be the Explorer. I had the Blue Sky Dweller. You know, after a couple of years, I felt like, you know, again, I kind of go back to the proportion and how it feels on the wrist. I felt like maybe slightly too thick and a little bit top heavy. So I ended up, yeah, getting the Explorer 2. It's super easy to wear. I mean, it's really thin. Obviously, it's great for traveling because it's got the second time zone. I usually just, you know, have it synced up with Kansas City time. And then when I go somewhere else, I can you know, flip the, uh, the hour to whatever's local. It's funny, this is one of the bigger ones in their collection and it wears pretty small on my wrist when I, you know, <laughs> but one I really like, I think, you know, over time you've seen some of those, you know, 1980s cream dial ones and, you know, how things age over time. I am really kind of curious to see how it goes and, you know, it could be a, a cool watch to, to pass down one day. Definitely, I think it's a great watch. It's one of like the, the most tool watch looking Rolexes that they still make in their, in their modern collection. But I wanna to get to your other Rolex. So tell us about that. I think everyone's gonna be really interested in the, the backstory behind this one. Yeah, so the new 41 millimeter Submariner. So this one was a gift from Mr. Mahomes this past year. I was blown away that that happened. I mean, typically quarterbacks, you know, get a, a cool gift for their offense alignment after the season. Just kind of a thank you for, for everything throughout the year. And the fact that, you know, he was getting something of this stature and let alone as many as he did, I couldn't believe he was able to pull that off. But again, goes to, you know, who he is as a person to think of us that way and also the ability to, to get as many as he did. 
it's a sweet watch. You know, I wore it down to Tampa a few days ago. I felt it was only fitting. I wore the watch that, uh, you know, Mahomes got us and it didn't work out the way we wanted, but uh, I'm really happy to have this in the collection. Obviously something that'll be there forever. It's one of the most perfect watches and it obviously shows you're doing your job. You're doing your job well. Let's stick with the dive watch theme just for one more second here. I know you got a, a cool Panerai in there and how does that kind of cap off the, the set of dive watches you've got and why is that one special for you? Yeah, the 1389, just kind of classic Panerai, submersible, 47 millimeter, you know, a little bit thinner, really light because of the material. I really love the, the bezel too. You know, they got the kind of all titanium ones, which aren't my personal favorite. I, I feel like, you know, this one, because it's kind of framed in the, in the metal on both sides of the bezel, it almost slims it down a bit, you know, so it's not quite as aggressively bezel, which again is kind of what throws me off of, you know, some of the dive watches and just a piece you could do anything with, wear it every day. I just, I like having it in the collection and it's a fun one. So we talked about your special Submariner, which is a watch that's probably like a lifetime watch for you and it's unique to you because of the engraving. But let's talk about a custom watch you also have, which, you know, not many people get to, get to say that. So, you know, what's, what's going on with this one? Yeah, so this guy is the Ox Un Junior Perpetual Calendar. I got the 47 millimeter in titanium. So it is a perpetual calendar, which is really cool. You know, all the little dots around there are the 31 days. You know, the four kind of dots on, on the side are the leap year indicators. At the bottom is the running seconds. And, you know, above it at the top is the power reserve. But on the case back, we have a custom engraving. So we did the NFL football. We did the NFL logo. And then the helmet is from the Cleveland Browns. And then obviously the KC for my time with the Chiefs. So it's kind of a, a journey of, of my football career. Really fun process and I'm, I'm glad they're able to do it for me. And also, you know, a practical watch. I mean, I do like to have as much as possible a mixture of, you know, complications, metals, you know, companies. And so, you know, that's my perpetual calendar. That's a true independent, it's a custom watch. It, it kind of ticks a lot of those boxes and also just a lot of fun. That's great. And, and I think it, it shows in your collection, honestly, this kind of mix of brands, mix of independents or, you know, major brands. So let's, let's stick with that and go to Jorn. How do you get into FP Jorn? How do you pick that watch? You know, what's, what's the story behind it for you? So it's the Sontograph Line Sport, the yellow dial. So I picked this one up, I think after 2018, you know, I used the excuse that that was the first time I was first team all pro to buy the watch. But with the, you know, the yellow dial, the red accents, it is a little bit, you know, kind of Chiefs themed. I can, you know, wear it around and got the Chiefs colors. The chronograph, it's, it's got a one one hundredth of a second. So if I remember, you know, the combine timing 40 yard dashes, boom, got that right there. Uh, I'm not going to say my 40 time, but I can you know, time some faster guys with it and get it, you know, precisely down to a hundredth of a second, which is really cool. You know, it's always fun to just kind of throw the chronograph on, watch it run. Then a really cool brand, probably the only watch from them I'd, you know, realistically wear on a day to day basis. It's a super fun watch. Let's talk about your Vacheron. It's definitely, you know, different than the rest of your collection. I'm, I'm interested to know about that. So I originally got it maybe four years ago now. It was a piece that, you know, my wife and I were actually just in Beverly Hills walking around, you know, going to all the shops and I tend to drag her into all, all the watch shops. So she's really patient for me, but I didn't, you know, know quite as much about them, but we went in there looking around and the guy, you know, pulled out the piece from the back and honestly the most beautiful watch I'd ever seen in person. Uh, we were both floored by it. Uh, similarly floored with the price of it, <laughs> to be honest. And we're like, okay, well, you know, that's not going to happen. So we left and, you know, something that, you know, just kind of sticks in, in your head. You know, one of those watches that, you know, quote unquote, got away. You know, eventually I just, it was one of those things you just keep thinking about and you're like, you know, it's something that I really want. So I wore this predominantly in Miami last year for the Super Bowl. Just felt like my most Miami watch. Still, I mean, probably top three most beautiful watches I've still ever seen in person. I'm just, every time I pick it up, you know, constantly blown away by it. It's just an awesome watch. I'm really glad I have it. And, you know, probably my, my only all gold piece that is ever going to be in the collection. But you got to have one, right? You got to have one. You got to have one all gold watch. So in the same collection, you've got a G-Shock. You've also got a Longa. So why this particular Longa? Yeah, so this one is the Zeitwerk and further the striking time. I mean, that's, you know, a big part of why I got it. The striking time is just so cool. I love the color scheme. I mean, it is, you know, a white gold piece, but it, 
I feel like it's a little bit sportier in terms of the style. You know, having the, the digital display, you know, the jumping hours, the jumping minutes, that's something you just don't see every day. I mean, every time I'm driving, you know, at a red light, I kind of hope that the, it, it times up for me, I'm able to look down at the wrist. It's about to flip over a minute right here, so might as well hold it up there. The joy in watching that, it just, it never gets old. And it's, I mean, you can't ever show it long and not show the backside there either. I mean, just the movement's incredible. This isn't even one of their probably top five most aesthetically pleasing movements. It's probably my favorite overall piece at the moment. And again, for me, I mean, 44 millimeters, you know, wears good or slightly small. So, you know, for a lot of people, they're a little bit deterred by, you know, the, the extra heft and the extra size, which for me is perfect. So you don't just have a killer watch collection, but being a Super Bowl champion, you know, down on, on your table there, I see uh, a certain uh, Super Bowl ring. I think some people who might not get to see those close up would be interested to, to get a good glimpse of that. Yeah, they absolutely knocked it out of the park. I mean, it is so nice. I've been told if you're seeing other people, you wear it with the logo facing out so they see it. And if you're just kind of, you know, wearing it around the house, you flip it around and you so just kind of look at it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which, uh, you know, I don't wear it too often. But I do like to wear it every now and again. It's fun to pull out and it's a nice reminder of what we accomplished and everything that went into it. And, you know, I thought for a while, what's going to be my Super Bowl watch? You know, should I get myself something? And then I got the ring and I really haven't thought about that since. Like the ring is the jewelry. It's right. the piece that accompanies the Super Bowl. They did such a good job with it. There's no watch that I could have that really commemorates that. So I also, you know, I've seen your Instagram and I know that you are big into cooking. Food's always been a huge part of my life. You know, I would say I kind of stopped watching cartoons, you know, younger than maybe most people would and transitioned into Food Network and watching, you know, kind of cooking stuff, culinary stuff. It was something I just enjoyed. I mean, you know, Emeril, Wolfgang Puck, you know, Good Eats with Alton Brown is where I learned a lot of stuff because I was very informational. This has been a, a thing that's probably 15 years in the running, figuring out my pizza recipe, but in the last few years especially, I've you know, kind of raised the game in terms of sharing with other people. You know, I started my blog a few years ago. Obviously, if you follow on Instagram, I, I post a lot of food stuff, and definitely with the off-season being here, gonna get back to a lot more of that. Have a lot of fun with it. I have a lot of fun, you know, using my watches primarily for, you know, timing stuff and cooking and, you know, being able to glance down while things are simmering away and just enjoy what's on my wrist.